Ryan Hall, thanks for joining. Yeah, no, I'm stoked to share this workout with you guys. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. This is uh, we've had a lot of days out here in Gunnison. It can get super cold. This is like one of the coldest places in the U.S. to train. So, yeah, when we're out here in the fall, we've had some chilly days, but it's uh, what are we? Almost into June now, and uh, it's nice out here this morning. Yeah, for sure. So good, good. Good uh, temperatures for Sarah's workout today. We're gonna do eight mile threshold. Um, she's training, obviously prepping for the Olympic trials, but keeping some threshold work in there. So most of her stuff is on the track, hitting that pretty hard. Um, but this threshold work kind of supports that. It's kind of like, obviously threshold work is her strength, be being a marathoner. So we want to, like my dad always says, like you play to your strength. So we want to keep this incorporated, but we're working on her weakness which I wouldn't necessarily say the track is her weakness, but it's important that we work on that 5K, 10K specific stuff for her future marathons too. Like we're looking not only at the trials and hopefully the games, but we're looking at like, how do we make her faster in the fall? How do we get a minute quicker her next time out? Sure. So getting her ready for 10K is a big part of that. But we still want to hit on her strength, which is threshold stuff. So that's why we're out here today hitting the eight mile threshold. We haven't done threshold work in probably 10 days to two weeks. I, I haven't looked back at her training too closely, but um, so yeah, we're gonna bang an eight mile threshold out here. And with threshold work, a lot of it's just based on feel. So I'm not like super specific, being like we gotta run 530 pace, especially when we're up here at nearly 8,000 feet. Um, pace becomes a like I said we've run this course a lot so we know what is good for her um, but she's in a different kind of fitness right now where we're not heavily focused on threshold so this is more of a kind of like supporting what she's doing right now kind of work so in terms of pacing it's like anywhere between 545 pace to 530 pace is great like I said we're up here 8,000 feet yeah. so um, we just let her kind of feel it out, work her way into it. That was going to be my next question. How do you judge the effort pace up at this particular altitude? But it sounds like no heart rate monitor, just no. feel. Yeah. yeah, we don't use heart rate a ton or really at all. It's, it's, it's largely just based on feel for yeah. her. So she'll start out and we'll see where her first mile's at and then she'll just kind of adjust naturally sure. as we're going. The goal today is not to go try to run the fastest threshold she's ever run before it's simply to get in a good solid effort yeah and then I've kind of what I've kind of learned over the years is it's best if you can kind of observe your results as a scientist is looking at a science experiment rather than internalizing it or trying to prove something looking at it being like oh like I gotta hit this pace and being really anal about it rather just being like okay I'm gonna run the right effort I'm gonna see what the pace is gonna be, and I find it interesting, I'm observing it, and it's gonna dictate future training, you know, but I'm not like internalizing it, and I don't have this emotional connection to every single mile split being like, oh, I'm not in shape, dang it, you know? <laughs> like not having that emotional tie to it. So really just like, Sarah's great at being in tune with her body, running the right effort, and just letting the pace be what it's gonna be. Yeah, awesome. And so this is a loop. It's all on road, is that right? And how long is the loop? Yep, yep. It's all on road. It's about 2K. Okay. So when we were prepping for London, um, this time, well, not a little bit, uh, last fall, we were looking for a 2K loop because London was a 2K loop. Yep. And so I drove all over Gunnison looking for things that didn't have too much traffic, not too much stopping sign. It was flat like London was going to be. And so I came up with this loop. And uh, it's, it's a pretty nice loop. It's a, There's some turns along the way, but it's pretty quiet. We go around this park. And we are on the main road for a little bit there. But for the most part, it's kind of winding through these neighborhoods and pretty flat. And gets a little bit of protection from the wind. I'm not seeing the trees move at all right now. So I think we're going to have a, a nice morning to run. Awesome. Let's do it. Am I breathing? Yeah, sure. <laughs> like 8,000 feet. You're just like... What, uh, out of curiosity, what's on the playlist? Um... <laughs> It's a, it's a bunch of like, I mean, kind of electronic dance stuff, some Lindsey Sterling. Yeah. All right, you good? Yeah. So just nice and solid, nothing crazy. Just work, if you need to, too, just work into it a little bit.
jacket and a sweatshirt. She always wants me cold. She hates it when I'm in like a t-shirt or tank top. <laughs> she burns hot. She likes it cold. This is like perfect for her right now. Right. What is it? Probably like 40 degrees, something like that? Yeah, I think. Low 40s? I think it's hot 30s, low 40s, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was my, two degrees Celsius when I checked the Celsius, so I think that's like 36. Yeah. yeah. My hands are cold right now. Yeah, so yeah. She's like loving this weather. It's so really comfortable. Yeah, good. I haven't been doing too many long thresholds, so. so I got some fruit snacks in case she gets hungry. <laughs> <laughs> some unorthodox fueling, but sugar is sugar, eh? right? Uh, 10.41 for two miles. Okay. So. 5.20. Yeah. Again, it's like, it's like how you feeling on the day, you know? If yeah. that pace is right today, then it's right. If it's 5.40. That's right, you know. Do the music. So my old school coach would have said, <laughs> you don't get music in the race. Or I guess you can in periods of the race, but yeah, right. what do you think about uh Yeah, so that is a concern to think about, you know, you aren't gonna get it in the race. But also there's a lot of things in the race you get that you don't get out here. That's so true. Like in the race, you're getting the energy of the crowd, the energy of being in a race. Yeah. So having the music, I think, in training helps you train at a higher level. Yep. And I've always been of that mindset. It's like with marathon training, you hear about guys doing depletion training, you know? Yep. Where they're learning to burn fat, training in a depleted state. I don't like that at all. I'm not a fan of that. No. I've always been like, let's train at the highest level we can possibly train at, get the best bang for our buck in training, and then it's going to pay off in the race, you know? And to be honest, like, I train with music all throughout my career, and I never once was in a race. I was like, where's the music? <laughs> you know, like, you're always, there's enough going on in a race where I never notice missing the music. So, I mean, it's a trade-off. I could see why guys would not use music at times. Like you do need to mentally condition yourself. But in my opinion, marathon training, long thresholds like this are hard enough as it is. Like let's just get the best result we can out of the workout. And that will pay off in the race. And it builds confidence too, you know? So, I'm a fan of music. We're doing mile reps at 520 pace, like earlier. Like probably, you know, like four months ago. Now she just came through three miles at 520 pace, you know? Yeah. Like one of my favorite things about the sport, or even just fitness in general, whether it's lifting or running, you know? Just seeing like the change, the adaptation in the body. Yeah. To be able to like, like I could use only build your mile reps at this pace. Now I'm running eight mile threshold in this pace. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool, you know? Like Regardless of where the racing comes, what the racing pans out to be, or seeing like the body, what's able to do when you have everything in place with the nutrition and the sleep, come up to 9,500 feet to sleep, it pays off, you know. Yeah, so I get more excited, not more, but equally excited seeing what this can translate to in the trials, but also looking to her fall marathon. And I think that's a cool place to be in where like a lot of guys who are just pure track athletes, like all their eggs are in the track basket. And that can just bring a lot of pressure to every workout, every race, to the trials. Whereas Sarah, it's like, yeah, we're like going after the trials with everything we can bring to the trials, but at the same time, it's not the only thing. It's like we got something beyond that that we're excited about. And that just kind of takes the weightiness 
taking the pressure off of the trials, you know? So like this can translate well to the trials, but it's also like we need this to be able to go faster than the marathon. Like she's operating 10 seconds to 12 seconds per mile quicker than she would be if we were running a 16 mile threshold. I'm talking about like her best threshold before London. It's like 532 pace for 16 miles. Right now we're right around 520, 522 pace. And we need to be able to do this so that we can come out here and do 16 mile thresholds at 530 to 529 pace. So excited about the trials with this, but also excited about the fall. The kind of stuff that I did wrong in my career. So I just got too far away from being in really good 5K, 10K shape. Like once I went to the marathon, I'd say I never really got in great 5K shape again. And that's what I think ultimately like limited my ability to be able to go faster than I did. 206. Could have gone quicker, I think, had I stayed in good 5K. On pace. <laughs> Just gotta go twice. Three times that distance. <laughs> Not bad for this uh, elevation though. Yeah. Lots of sharp turns too. Nice. What was the what was your average on that? 520. Nice. That's really good. That's good. Yeah, no, that was great. Yeah. It was rolling. Yeah. I've never I've never seen her run that fast for eight miles. Even in Flagstaff, okay. which is a thousand feet lower than this, so yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, strong. it didn't look breathing. You know, it was a little heavy, but it didn't yeah. look like she was slowing yeah. at all. You know, yeah. could have yeah. gone a little yeah. longer. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, right where she needs to be. Yeah. Like I said, we haven't been doing a lot of this stuff too, so it's good to see like it's still there, and yeah. good to see that the shorter track work is like making her threshold stuff better without even doing a lot of it. You know, so. Can do a few 200s now? Or? Yeah, she can do yeah. two by 200. Two by just kind of open the legs up a little bit. First one, just kind of work into it. And the next one, try to... I, I call it like dessert at the end of a workout. Because 200s are so fun. It's like yeah. the most fun sprint. Cause it's like not so far where you're going lactic and tying up and stuff. But just like you can kind of open up on it a little bit. Stretch out the legs. And hit a little bit of turnover too. And it's always good too to like practice visual, visualizing yourself closing well at the end of a race. And also learning to like run fast on tired legs, but more than anything, it's like like dessert. You want to end with that nice sweet taste in your mouth. Of like, oh, running's fun. Two hundreds are so fun that it kind of does that. You know? so, yeah, she'll bust out a couple in here. Now we're gonna do a couple of two hundreds. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that because my tempos haven't felt as good like just since I'm banging super hard track intervals right now. Yeah, <laughs> like I did pretty hard like six by a mile. And I'm, I'm going on just like one day rest, just trying to like make up for lost time. So, yeah. so yeah, to like feel, feel that good running that pace. That's really encouraging up good here. Good. Like I get a pretty big conversion from altitude. Yep. So uh, I'll take that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> two yeah. 200s coming up. Yeah. I'll do a couple 200s. Yeah. Practice clothing for the trials. Yeah.
rush today, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a long cool down. I like to do that sometimes where combining threshold with the long run. So she's gonna do a long enough cool down to get 16 on the day. So she's just under three miles for a warm up. So she'll need like a five and a half mile cool down. Yeah. Are we not gonna do the afternoon uphill? Yeah. We're gonna take a couple easy days and come back on the track. So. Just oh, one, no, one easy day. One easy Sorry. day. Yeah, one easy day. Which is why I don't want to do the uphill run. Okay, yeah. so we'll do this. The track work is that down here? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's right across the way in here is uh, Western okay. University. Okay. They have a beautiful track. So Perfect. We'll hop on there on Sunday and that will round out her week. But just going on one easy day, so she's not going to do. Sometimes we'll do double sessions, like morning workout, afternoon workout. But we're not going to do that today because yeah. she's just going on one day rest. So. Perfect. So Sarah, I noticed you've got the uh, the races on for cool downs. Uh, we spoke a little bit about this off camera, but uh, you use them for long runs too. And yeah, the yeah. Meta, I really love the Meta Speed Sky. Yeah. This year, I really helped Asics develop, and I found like yeah, like a lot of times I'll just keep cooling down in them or like do my long runs in them because I haven't really had. I think with some people, the super shoes like. If they overdo it, they get like calf or foot issues, but that hasn't been my experience. Like, yeah. I like respond really well to them. So, yeah. so yeah, I love. I mean, I'm not doing easy runs in them, but okay. <laughs> I would like to. Okay. <laughs> which uh, which is the shoe you prefer for like easy runs? I use the Nova Blast, the A6 Nova Blast. It's yeah. amazing. It's like been a game changer for me for marathon training. Like, like how I handle. 130, 140 mile weeks is totally different now in that shoe. Like it's a similar, similar kind of foam as this shoe, and it's it's just helped me. Like I just am not as beat up from yeah. the mileage. Yeah. So I yeah, they're like oh my gosh, total game changer. Yeah, cool. Love them.